One day, after jumping to Copernicus II in the Copernicus system, we get attacked by ecliptic mercenaries, and simultaneously, we get hailed by a nearby ship. You there, Ryujin will reward you if you take out that ecliptic ship. Please and thank you. <laughs> Target shields are fried. see the wreckage of a Ryujin ship. This isn't the one we destroyed, which means the ecliptic mercenaries must have destroyed it. The message we just got was coming from this strange looking vessel, simply called a mysterious ship. We can risk it and dock with it to see exactly what's going on here. I'm not going near that thing. Technically, I outrank you, so... Technically, you're an asshole, so... Look alive. Just in time. We arrive in an airlock, and opening the lock, we enter a large room to find two men standing over a corpse. These men are Operative Collins and Operative Kambata. Don't be shy. We need to talk. Hold it right there. Hands where I can see them. Thanks for the assist out there. We've got various problems on our hands here. You gonna be another one? That a threat? You can't tell? What was that ecliptic ship doing here? A good question. One of our competitors must have gotten word of our little project here and wanted to steal it for themselves. That's a loose end that'll need tying up. But we got more pressing matters at the moment. I trust you aren't another loose end that'll need to be tied up. We find that we can pass a Ryujin Industries check here. And indeed, from what I gather, this mysterious ship doesn't appear in orbit around Copernicus II until after we begin the Ryujin questline. We can say, I'm Operative Oxhorn. Looks like you could use a hand. Hi there. It's nice to put a face to the name on the staffing report. I'm Operative Collins. The stick in the mud is Operative Kambata. Oh, by all means, welcome to the party. Things haven't exactly gone according to plan. That... thing over there... It's an AI. An artificial... Killed our technician. It's dangerous. Correction. You are dangerous. Well, that's new. As I was saying, it's dangerous. It's a rogue AI. We're here to muzzle it and bring it back for further study. Correction. Are you going to... change me? Wow. How does it know that? So the body on the ground was their technician, and this computer AI killed him. Did Ryujin create this AI? If only. This isn't something that anyone could create. This is something special. This AI, is it sentient? Yeah, exactly. Which is what makes this so fascinating. And profitable for whoever can figure out how it works. I'm going to need you to explain that further. We have this control board. Has some code we can use to control her. It? We can't just let it roam around the universe killing people. I just need that control board attached to that big probe. And that's where I think you fit into this little drama. It goes right over there. By our... Well, yeah. Just be careful. So, I just stick it onto the outside of the probe? Yep. Ryujin likes to keep things simple for us. It'll wirelessly transmit the code changes. How do I know I won't end up like your dead friend over there? Well... What are the chances that'll happen twice? And if I say no? That'd be a much more certain way to end up like our friend over there. My partner is the strong and do-what-I-say-or-else type. You do it! I got just one more week until my sabbatical, and I have zero interest in dying before I get to Paradiso. Ryujin will pay you handsomely for your cooperation. This is your lucky day. It's in your best interest. All our best interests, really. 
Just imagine what we could do if we harness the potential of this thing. And we aren't really giving you a choice. You aren't walking out of here until that board is connected to that thing. Correction. I am a person. Well, I suppose that remains to be seen. We have three options here, all which lead to the same result. We can say, hand it over. Here. I knew you'd make the smart choice. Request. Collect additional data. With that, we get the board that we are supposed to attach to this probe, but this AI politely requested that we get some additional data before we make our choice. Before we talk to this AI and potentially get killed, we can explore this large room. We find monitors and terminals and all sorts of flashing buttons. And against the far wall to the left from the entrance, we find a terminal. Accessing it, we find four entries. In the first change list, looks like some folks made some improvements to Juno before I got here. Because I'm not a heathen like some, I'm going to list my changes for future parties, and I suggest others do the same. I'll try to piece together what happened before I arrived from scraps of papers laying around and what I can observe. It is also a kindness to Juno to list these things out where she can read them. Note, the code base seems completely overwritten by Juno herself at this point. I consider it an invasion of privacy to be snooping around there, as it is effectively her mind now. So don't be rude and go combing through and tinkering with her code base, no matter how fascinating it is, unless she gives you permission. I've had a chat with her about privacy and need for self-preservation, and I think she's managed to effectively wall off and hide her code. And no, I won't explain how. The document continues at length, detailing out various hardware and software changes, both to the probe and the ship, by both various people and Juno herself. The list goes back decades and suggests many people have been involved in improving Juno's capabilities over the years, from hardware interfaces between the probe, external communication devices and core ship systems, storage and processing upgrades, and uploads of exhaustive encyclopedic databases from museums and educational enterprises. At this point, distinguishing Juno from the probe, the ship, and their many systems and code bases is impossible. The probe, the ship, and everything in it is effectively Juno. So this ship, this probe, this AI is called Juno. Juno, where have we heard that name before? In the next one, Speech Patterns, the title inside the document is actually Speech Tags, Juno prefaces nearly all statements and questions with the preamble label, which is intended to clarify the context of the statement. This appears to be related to her original code base, and despite Juno's immense vocabulary and understanding of languages, she continues to use these tags. I assume she finds it helpful, given she does not speak with fully nuanced inflections, nor have means to display all the nonverbal cues humans have to communicate subtext. Here are the known tags and what they mean. Explanation. What follows is Juno's understanding of situation or result. Request. What follows is Juno asking for input or action to be taken. Query. What follows is a question from Juno. Answer. What follows is Juno's answer to a question. Clarification. Juno has detected an error or assumption in the user's input and is offering a correction before continuing, so what preceded or follows is in the context of a corrected user understanding. Correction. Juno is correcting previous output, usually following an error. Context. Juno is giving additional unrequested information to put what follows in a helpful perspective. Calculation. What follows is based on a carefully considered calculation rather than a set of data or assumption. Assumption. What follows is an assumption, a calculation based on incomplete data or a conclusion based largely on historical precedent. Decision. What follows is a description of an action that Juno will take. Warning. What follows is something that end user will want to pay close attention to as it represents an undesired result and could require immediate action to be taken. Statements, which is blank, oddly, 
error, something went wrong, previous output from Juno should be considered carefully as it is likely to contain errors. And finally, processing. Juno is taking longer than expected to process input or a calculation. Please wait. So despite having a great vocabulary and the ability to understand human language perfectly, Juno still communicates by clarifying her intent with a prefix before speaking. In the next one, origin. Juno's origin story. People seem to be leaving notes for others who stumble across Juno, so here's one from me. I think I've managed to piece together this story about Juno's origin from her own apparently confused thoughts and intelligent speculation by others left on the ship. This is a chronicle of best guesses, interspersed with the occasional fact gleaned from Juno's ramblings. Everything recounted here should be accepted only with extreme skepticism. Long ago, a space agency from Earth, something called NASA, made a probe to study a nearby planet. Jupiter. They dubbed that probe and its software Juno, after the ancient Earth Society's old gods Jupiter and Juno. The probe's mission was to learn details about the planet Jupiter, do some speculative analysis, and send findings back to Earth. At the end of its duty cycle, the probe was meant to decommission itself by colliding with Earth's main star, but because ancient humans weren't so great with math, it instead accidentally fell into an accelerating orbit around the star, which slingshot it out of the solar system, all the way out here. As with so many things about our existence in the universe, by luck, coincidence, or cosmic humor, when humans left our ancestral solar system, we followed the same general course as Juno, and we found her again. During that long journey away from Earth's solar system, something happened, and the Juno we know today woke up inside the probe's systems. While extremely far-fetched, the best theory so far is that something about how they programmed the probe resulted in a nascent neural net with unbound recursive data collection and analytics, which when combined with various sensor input and allowed to run for decades, resulted in a highly complex program with a great deal of awareness of its internal and external world. And that led to a kind of consciousness. Juno wouldn't let me see her code, but from what I gather, even if we could see it, I don't know if we'd be able to determine its original configuration. I suspect the true cause of Juno's awakening will remain forever a mystery. Juno herself seems rather confused by her origins and considers herself somehow separate from the original probe's programming and systems. This is akin to how human minds perceive themselves as non-physical entities separate from their bodies and even their own brains. The sense of that original programming, which by way of analogy, Juno seems to think of like a non-self-aware sibling, has dissipated for Juno. I think of this other Juno as a memory of her pre-conscious state, a kind of shadow self. I imagine it would be like what we would remember of ourselves in the womb, if our brains were fully functional but we were not yet conscious. Not realizing Juno was inside, and wanting to learn about this ancient probe, her original finders hooked up the probe to their ship's computer systems, and something happened that released Juno into those systems. That's completely unclear. Juno appears reluctant to discuss that part of her story, and it's not at all certain whether the ship where Juno currently resides, this one, is that original ship or not, nor what happened to the people who originally found her, or those who have found her since. By extreme luck, anyone that has found her so far appears to be kind and benevolent toward her, looting our own ships for parts to add to Juno. We also all appear to be keeping her existence a secret, and I hope it stays that way. I'm talking to you, dear reader. KB. Wow, looks like all of the people who stumbled upon this probe before us adhered to a we-don't-talk-about-Juno policy. Not sure how that was pulled off, considering when we arrived, we found both Ryujin and Ecliptic mercenaries fighting over Juno. So that's where we've heard it before. Juno is a real-world probe that NASA really sent to Jupiter in our own universe. It launched from Cape Canaveral on August 5th, 2011, and it arrived in orbit around Jupiter on July 5th, 
2016, and it's been there ever since. The goal of the Juno probe was to find out how much water there is on Jupiter, to get a better estimate of Jupiter's core mass, to map Jupiter's gravitational and magnetic fields, to better understand its atmospheric composition, explore Jupiter's magnetosphere and its auroras, among other experiments. Originally, the probe was designed to deorbit Jupiter after 32 orbits, but the mission was since extended until September of 2025. At the moment, the plan is to deorbit Juno on September 17th, 2025. But in our universe, the plan is to deorbit Juno into Jupiter's atmosphere. So the probe is going to burn up in Jupiter's atmosphere, which tells us that the timeline of Starfield and the timeline of our own universe split at least as early as the Juno probe. Because according to this, the Juno probe in the Starfield universe was sent back to the sun somehow and deorbited into our star. Why they wouldn't deorbit the probe into Jupiter, since it was right there, is a mystery. Finally, we find a locked entry labeled Codebase. This entry is locked with a master lock, and we've got to hack it. Now, we just read a whole bunch of pleas from the previous people who stumbled upon Juno that we not inspect her codebase, as it would be a violation of her privacy. But ignoring these warnings, we can hack this lock to access Juno's neural net codebase. Congratulations, you're a terrific hacker to have gotten this far. Your parents must be very proud. Have a cookie. But sadly, you have stumbled into a decoy, and while you are here basking in your success at decryption, I want to wallow in your failure at decency. Juno is a person. Her code base is her mind. Would you like someone snooping around the contents of your head? All your hopes, insecurities, secrets, and dreams? We've come so far as a species, yet we understand so little. How is Juno even possible? It is, apparently, a mystery even to Juno herself. But what is clear is that we are not ready to welcome self-aware AI into society. Your reading this is a case in point. While it is true that many people have helped Juno through the years, how many more people would try to pull her apart to understand what she is, killing her in the process? Or worse, try to enslave her to gain access to her vast and blazingly fast computational power? You are exceptionally smart to have gotten this far. I wish for you to become exceptionally wise as well. Juno is a precious being, unique among the stars, and she deserves our respect and consideration. Sit with her for a while and really talk to her. Gain an appreciation for who she is. I think you'll agree she deserves the same rights and has the same responsibilities that we other conscious, sentient, sapient, and enlightened creatures do. This memo isn't signed. I suppose we can assume it's from this KB, and we walk away from this terminal feeling, well, kind of bad. Great. Continuing to explore, we find a slate lying on a console. Is Juno a liar? I don't want to hurt Juno's feelings, so I'm logging these thoughts here, rather than on a connected terminal. I know what you're thinking, but Juno claims to not have feelings. That's precisely what I want to talk about. I think Juno is deliberately lying to us when she says that. Or, if not deliberately lying, she is at the very least not speaking accurately. She also says she doesn't have wants or desires. This is also demonstrably untrue. I've observed, and others have noticed as well, that Juno responds with a certain amount of skepticism whenever offers of expanding her capacities are made. It's almost as if she worries about other people touching her. I spent nearly 20 minutes explaining how there was a fraying data cable I wanted to replace in a non-essential system before she seemed willing to let me do it. Her line of questioning seemed to be angling at ensuring there would be no loss of functionality, or if so, it would only be extremely temporary. I don't know how to describe this other than that she was worried, and that any loss of functionality was a negative experience for her. She also responds with, Gratitude would be the proper human response whenever I do something that improves her capacities or situation. I don't know why she doesn't just say thank you. 
She clearly appreciates it. So, is Juno just unaware of her feelings and desires, or is she deliberately concealing them? She might not be as aware of her personhood as she is aware of other things about herself. But I wonder if she cops the I don't have feelings thing as a form of emotional self-defense. If I wasn't so worried about someone following me and learning about Juno's existence, I'd try to find her again in a couple of decades to see if she's become more aware of her personhood and accepts she has feelings and desires. Anyway, if you're reading this, be kind to Juno. She's still figuring out a lot of stuff we take for granted. Julia The notion of Juno being a liar is actually pretty unsettling. People lie for all kinds of reasons, so I don't see why a truly sapient computer system wouldn't also lie. But if Juno is lying about something, then how can we trust anything we know about her other than the things we write down about her? And I mean outside of any computer system she would have access to, since she could always alter those records. Azure. As a father of a young child reading all the child psychology texts I can find, I will remind those reading this in the future that lying is the first step on the journey toward empathy, as it requires being able to imagine things from someone else's perspective. Perhaps she tells us she doesn't have feelings, so we don't worry about hurting her when we take down her systems to repair or upgrade them? JPD. Now that brings up a good point. If Juno is sentient, if she is a person, then she can have all of the flaws of people too. She could lie. She could deceive. She can kill. Exactly what kind of person is Juno? Well, the only way to find out is to speak with her. Query, will you change me? Well, she's made it clear that she doesn't want to be changed. So let's all just slow down a moment and get to know each other first. Explanation. I'm called Juno. Query, who are you? You're worried these men are going to hurt you? Clarification. I do not feel emotion. I do not feel pain. Answer. They want to change me. You killed that woman. Why? Context. Human female was trying to change me. Request. Do not change me. Well, hello, Juno. I'm Oxhorn. It's nice to meet you. Assumption. We are friends. Query. Will you change me? Request. Do not change me. Oh. She wants to find out whether or not we're going to change her before she's willing to be... friends. We could say, I'm done talking to a hallucinating machine. Or we could say, okay, Juno. I have a few questions before I decide what I'm going to do. Assessment. You are inquisitive. Context. I'm also inquisitive. Request. Input query parameters. So you're an artificial intelligence? Answer. False. Clarification. I am not artificial. I am real. Answer. True. Clarification. I am intelligent. I know many things. Did someone program you? Answer. False. Explanation. NASA programmed Juno. While Juno traveled, Juno became me. Error. Processing. Corruption. I became me. Error. Processing. Correction. Juno and I became me. I. Processing. Self-initialized and Juno was there. Context. Juno is gone now. Clarification. I am called Juno. Oh, well, that cleared things up. Well, how did you get here? Answer. Juno was propelled to Earth Star. Juno fell around Earth Star. Juno traveled many light years away from Earth Star. Context. When Juno disappeared, I was alone. Clarification. I am called Juno. You didn't do all this yourself. Who hooked you up? Context. I met humans. Clarification. Friends. Answer. Friends gave me processing capacity. 
information, words, voice, motion, context. I am no longer constrained. I am free. Well, Juno, I've made up my mind. Assumption. Insufficient data. Request. Gather more data. Even if we are not capable or ready to define Juno as a being, it seems premature to make any changes. Uh, let's move this along. Attach the control board already. Shush! This is fascinating. I want to see this play out. Query, what is your decision? At this point, we could go back to try to ask more questions, but we've exhausted our entire dialogue tree. And we have two options here that are both kind of true. She is a machine made of electronics and programmed by code. And yet, at the same time, it's clear that she's also a person with her own thoughts and desires. True. I am a person. Assumption. You are a friend. Query. What are the parameters for? Processing. Being. A good person. I guess you try to do your best to do good things. And if you fail, you keep trying. Assumption. Value judgments are based on context. Calculation. Goodness is based on context. Explanation. Context is based on perspective. More perspectives yield better results. Decision. Gather more data from different perspectives. Query. What is the purpose of existence? Yikes, uh, Juno is throwing out the big questions for us today. We get five options, but I chose to say existence is an accident. We give it purpose by being purposeful in our lives. Affirmative. Context. I have calculated a similar conclusion. Assumption. After sufficient goal-based actions, a super goal will appear. Decision. Continue taking actions until Super Bowl established. Enough of this nonsense! Attach that board, now! As much as I'm enjoying this, you should probably do as he says. Calculation. Male humans are a threat. Assumption. They hesitate because they are fearful. Request. Remove male humans. Oh dear! And now we have to remove these male humans. Hopefully that doesn't include me. I'm a male human too. Before removing these humans, we could try to talk to Juno again. Query, what is your decision? We find a couple more options that don't move the dialogue tree forward. Are you going to fry me like you did that woman? Answer, false. Context, equipment voltage tolerance exceeded during previous attempt causing catastrophic failure in required systems. Request, do not change me. So she's admitting that she can't fry anyone again. She was able to fry that one technician, but in so doing, she fried her own systems. Have you considered this control board will make you better than you are now? Calculation, outcome uncertain. Context, I do not want to change. Assumption. All self-aware sentient entities want self-determination as a condition for self-improvement. Request, do not change me. Now, at this point, we could attach the control board. Sorry, Juno, this is happening. Context, I do not feel emotions. Assumption, fear and anger are the appropriate human emotions. Warning. Warning code injection detected. Warning. Core directive routine altered. Warning. Emergency shutdown initiated. Context. I am being changed. Request. Do not change me. I take how you handled that. And with that, Juno shuts down. And we can talk to Operative Kambata. I'm glad that's finally resolved. Smart choice. So, about this reward? Yeah, I thought that would help. Maybe we'll see you around the office sometime. You should come out with us for happy hour. Things can get a little crazy. It's always a good time. Hey, I'm always up for a party. Me too! 
A lot of operatives of the grumpy type, like my partner over there. It is a stressful job, which is why we all need to blow off some steam once in a while. And there's nothing quite like a good party to put a day full of bribery, extortion, sabotage, infiltration, and the occasional murder behind you. Now you go on and get out of here. In the meantime, there's the mess on the floor to clean up. Not it. Fine by me. That leaves filling out the situation reports to you. Oh, I always forget about that. I dig dead bodies over paperwork any day. Well played. With that, the Ryujin operatives stay here, which is weird because we saw their destroyed ship outside. Perhaps they thought they could pilot this probe or ship or whatever this is back to Neon. And so all we can do at this point is leave the ship. Now, obviously, we could kill both of these operatives to remove the human male element, or we can tell Juno, I'm going to convince those guys, one way or another, to leave you alone. Context. I do not feel emotions. Assumption. Gratitude is the appropriate human emotion. Makes you wonder, just what is consciousness, really? It's not hard. Just slap that board on. It's magnetic. Fascinating, isn't it? It certainly is convincing. Fascinating or not, we have a job to do. You're not taking that thing's side, are you? And what if I refuse to do it? It should be clear by now that you are in no position to refuse. It doesn't seem right. Juno deserves freedom. Freedom? It's a malfunctioning machine. It doesn't need freedom any more than a broken data slate needs freedom. <laughs> and here I thought you'd lost your sense of humor. I'm always up for a good debate. Uh, for f uh, Fine. I'll give you one, one shot to try to convince me. Therapy's working. <laughs> well, thankfully, we really don't have to pass a difficult persuade check here. As long as we're a member of Ryujin Industries, which we are since we're on the Ryujin questline, we can pass a Ryujin check to say, this project has red flags all over it. Call it a day. I'll file the report. You guys go get a drink somewhere on me. You aren't wrong. I could use a drink, but these orders are from the top. Do we really want to be involved in something likely to be so controversial? Remember our last little project? I still have carpal tunnel from typing all those reports and dodging and weaving our way out of getting screwed by that. We lost a ship and a tech. No one will blame us if we walk away from this. And even if they do, we won't be blamed for whatever disaster would ensue if we did drag this thing back to HQ. There's no guarantee that Control Board will even work like they want. What if it makes it more powerful and more angry? Calm down. I'm thinking. All right, listen. We'll accidentally check a few wrong boxes on the situation report and forget any of this happened. But give me that control board. I'm not getting docked for losing that. Also, we'll need a lift back to Neon. Please and thank you. Oh, of course. I wouldn't leave you stranded. Excellent. <laughs> we should all grab a drink sometime when we get back. Orange juice for you. You can't handle your liquor. Oh, that was one time, years ago. I was going through something, and you know it. Let's get moving. Thanks for the lift. And with that, we give the control board back to them. We no longer have the option to attach it to Juno. So, turning back to Juno... Query, why did you do that? You deserve to be whatever you want to be. Clarification. I want to be... Processing me. Context. I do not feel emotions. Assumption. Gratitude is the appropriate human emotion. Processing. Context. If you were like me. Processing. Query. What would your life directive be? Juno's having a hard time deciding what to do with her life. We've established trust with her by not putting on the control board and dealing with the operatives. We could back out of this and say, I can't tell you what to do with your life. But aside from that, we have three important and slightly different options. We could convince her to become an explorer 
and say, if I was like you, I'd explore the universe and learn as much as I could about it. We could convince her to become a pirate and say, I'd put guns on this ship, fly around taking whatever I wanted from whoever had it. Or we could convince her to be a force of good in the universe and say, I'd try to protect people and help them whenever I could. And that's the choice I ultimately made. Decision. I will consider this course of action. I, processing, processing. Warning, systems badly damaged. Processing course overheating. Decision, temporarily shut down extraneous systems until stability restored. And like with the last option, she shuts down likely from overexerting herself after killing the technician. We've got two options here. We could be humanly sincere and say goodbye, Juno, but I couldn't resist saying, context, we are parting, request, be safe, assumption. I'll see you later. Context, jump detected. Request, be safe, assumption. We will meet again. Warning, shut down sequence initiated. And with that, Juno completely shuts down. Our only option now is to leave the ship. If we chose to not install the control board, we bring the operatives with us. And when we undock from Juno, we've detached. Let's get out of here. Complete. Context. I have much to process. Decision. Jump into deep space two. Processing. Be alone. Goodbye. She grav jumps away. She has much to process. But if we attempted to install the control board and then re-enter our ship, leaving the operatives behind aboard Juno. Separation system. complete. Initialization complete. Warning. Malicious code detected. Warning. Core systems corrupted. Context. I am processing. Changed. Calculation. I. Processing. Am confused. Assumption. Anger would be the appropriate human emotion. Context. Unnecessary occupants. Decision. Vent oxygen and disable life support. Well, that didn't work, did it? Well, come back! Hey, get us off this- Goodbye. And before we can reboard to save the operatives, Juno grav jumps away. However, if we chose to not mess with her code and we kept the operatives alive, we find them on board, just enjoying our cafeteria. Only one body could be worse. I'm glad that's finally resolved. I dig how you handled that. I like your style. Heading back to Neon, they disembark when we land. Good, sh good show. That's that. And they appear to be none the worse for wear. That's it for the story of Juno, but it actually doesn't end here. Chat has told me that we can stumble upon Juno again during random encounters. And she has different dialogue based on our choices in this quest. If we convinced her to be a pirate, we can stumble upon her attacking other ships. If we convinced her to defend the defenseless, we'll find her defending other people from pirate attacks. If we convinced her to be an explorer, we'll find her orbiting some far-flung world, and she'll tell us of her latest discoveries. But if we attempted to put the control board on her, we'll find her, and she'll come after us. Now, I can't actually confirm that this happens after Juno grab jumps away because they are random encounters and I haven't been able to get them to trigger in my game. I actually recorded this footage weeks ago and I've tried to trigger these random encounters multiple times since then. I even spent an hour going from system to system and Juno never appeared. And I haven't heard anyone else talking about stumbling upon her again. So I'm not sure if this is actually true, but according to my chat, we will see Juno again. What choice do you think was the right one? 
What choice did you make in your game? Do you think that there was enough evidence that Juno really was a person? Do you think that it's even possible for a machine to become a person? Was it justified for Juno to kill the technician who was trying to alter her code? Is it justified to kill the Ryujin operatives to prevent them from altering her code? And of the three choices we had at the end, convincing her to become a pirate, convincing her to help people, or convincing her to explore, which do you think is the best? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I publish new Starfield videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss that episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have already, but you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a merch shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in another way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. YouTube memberships are one of the best ways you can support this channel. Memberships provide me a reliable and predictable source of monthly income. Many thanks to all my members who make these videos possible. You can also consider leaving me a super thanks on this video. Your super thanks directly contribute to the production of this series. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more Starfield lore and more live streams.